this is Analog Spectrum. These guys remember when Star Wars didn't suck, and the Quarter Pounder was the best burger money could buy. First thing you're going to have to edit out. That's it. <laughs> Uh, all right everybody this well, is you know you said you wanted to start with that so <laughs> no don't start with that so uh this is uh this is yeah, okay back would you start. like to restart no we're good well let me get let me get started with just the regular intro okay. yeah you know, it's, it's we're, we're recording this is okay i'll just have to clip clip it so okay. yeah this is analog yeah, spectrum this is, <laughs> let me get that talking Doug. god damn it <laughs> no <laughs> uh, this is analog spectrum this is tony i'm here with doug say hello doug no i'm not gonna doug's in a mood today <laughs> i am y'all just gonna have to deal with it all right we're all dealing with it so uh just deal we're on zoom right now we just, we're and okay so full disclosure to all our listeners out there all seven of you uh yeah, we're uh, we're trying to make sure that we put the podcast together with enough time so we don't run out of podcasts. And this is a I did some math on my ma- I did some math on my calendar, which is what you do. And uh, I realized that we we uh, we're going to need to record one more podcast. So we we put this one together. Hopefully, it'll be a good one. Who the hell knows? I'm sure you guys. Who will knows? Tell us. They're all good. They're all great. They're all amazing. So uh, you know, and if they're not amazing, not every one of them could be a winner. So we're, we did another movie swap for this yeah, one. Go watch Joe Rogan if you don't like it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, not, you know, he needs to make sure he, he justifies his contract with Spotify. And I expect ours is going to arrive any day now. I mean, right? I mean, sure. why would they not want to yeah. pay us money to be on their platform? Um, again, yeah, exactly. I, Along so, with Fox and MSNBC and, and CNN. and All those folks. I, oh, man, don't, die. don't even get me started. I'd wade right into it. So, so we did a movie swap. I was doing some research on Newsweek today, and it was it was scary. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to tackle that in another podcast. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of stuff going on in the world, that's for sure. So, but yeah. uh, all right. So we did a movie swap. Uh, Doug wanted me to watch The mm-hmm. Hunter, uh, and that's the 1980 Steve McQueen movie, his last movie, and uh, and I wanted uh, Doug- last film. Yep. Yep. And Doug uh, watched uh, Defending Your Life, which is, I think, 1991, uh, an Albert Brooks movie. Two very different movies. Is that uh, 1991? Yeah, wow. 1991. Yeah. So uh, uh, and so, again, 1991, one, one was kind of a pseudo action movie, quasi action movie. The other one is kind of a dry romantic comedy. So we we uh, we went two different. Yeah, directions. I guess you could classify it as that. Which one? Romantic comedy? Or yeah, it's, I guess it's a rom com, isn't it? Now we're oh, Brooks is, I yeah. guess rom com is. That's hard to say. I mean, I don't know. Well, let's start with that one because last time okay. we started with your movie. Let's start with defend. Let's start with defending your life. Uh, okay. As, al- okay. al- as always, uh, you know, spoiler alert. Sure, whatever for movies that are. Yeah. Around. Okay. Whatever. We're just gonna stop doing that. We we'll tell everybody. <laughs> Yeah, we should, yeah. We should, like I said, we should have called our podcast spoiler alert, uh, yeah. especially with, um, because whatever, man. I mean, uh, like I said, we're not talking about a, a recent release, but which maybe we'll do sometime soon. Yeah. Have you ever put out anything worth watching? Ah, he's so cynical today. <laughs> man, well, no, I was having this conversation with somebody just the other day. We uh, we make popcorn at my at my work and we give it away to customers, you know, and yeah, I was they ran out and I was busy making more popcorn and it smells so good. Just like the it movies, does. you know, when you're making popcorn, when they make a popcorn into movies. And I was saying to someone and, uh, you know, it's like, man, I can't, you know, it reminded me of that. And I'm like, I can't remember the last time I went to the movies. Um, and then I realized it was Maverick. And how long ago was that? What, how, I mean, uh, almost a year now. Yeah. Crazy, man. And so, uh, and I started thinking about it. Like the reason I haven't gone, it's just been nothing but shitty movies put out. Yeah. Like I, there's not been a single movie that's been out. And I really, the only reason I went to see Maverick is for this podcast. Uh, I probably would have seen it at some point, but um, mm-hmm. I went to the theater to see it specifically for the podcast, but there's really been nothing that's come out. That's, that's made me want to go like, Oh yeah, let's go see that. You know? Yeah. I, I, uh, I Maverick, I think Maverick. I and I and I last year I went to go it's see Spider Man, right? It's all a Spider Man movie. It's the most recent yeah. Spider Man movie, which I liked. I liked a lot. And uh, and I went to go see the Doctor Strange movie. Didn't like that that much. I'm, you know, there's all this kind of discussion about how uh, with 
uh, comic books is kind of burnout, but I honestly got to, it's not the burnout. I just don't think they're, they're good anymore. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. problem, man. The yeah. stories are, the stories are getting so convoluted and so stretched out and, and, and truthfully, like the first ones, like you look at like the first Iron Man and, and it was great. It was fine. It was great. But, but that was, that was original. Now it's become formulaic, you know, yes. you know, everything needs to be, you know, oh my gosh, it's into the world type stuff there, you know, and it's, yeah. it's heavy on the CGI, yeah. I, you know, I, and, and they're just not, and they're just not that good. And we actually we do have a podcast coming up our next record recording where we're going to talk a little bit about that, but yeah. uh, well, let me take let me just take this opportunity to, to to segue right into the Albert Brooks movie because that is exactly what that movie was not. Okay, so when you when you asked me to watch that, you asked me if I had seen it. I said no. Uh, I, I was mistaken. I had seen it, but it was a long time ago. Okay, and uh, so I didn't really remember it, especially all the details. There was a lot of good details in there, but and I, and I'll tell you, man, the thing that struck me the most about it, there was a couple things. First of all, the pacing, right? And and I know Siskel and Ebert, when I was a kid, used to used to talk about this. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It's a movie, man. Shut up. But now that I kind of know a little bit more about it, it's true, man. The, the pacing really, really sets a, a, a large part of the vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this movie just, it just, like some of the scenes, especially the early scenes, uh, when they're pushing all those people in the wheelchair, you know, right after he dies and he's going into, uh, I guess, purgatory or whatever they call right. it. And, and just um, to explain for everybody that's listening, this whole movie is about is, is exactly that. An individual dies and he goes to kind of this this way station or a, a halfway point. A holding pattern, right? Oh, yeah, for yeah. a week. Yeah, and purgatory is a good way to look at it. But, but truthfully, it's not. A Christianity view of the afterlife right, right. because because it's all about it's all about either reincarnation or moving forward into like the next plane of existence not to make it right. too esoteric. and while he's there uh, he has to look at scenes from his life and defend his life and the right. one thing that they really want people are these people of a, this existence to be able to move forward is to overcome fear he has to overcome right. fear to move forward and and I'm sure we'll get into this, but while there, he meets uh, he meets a, a woman, and he falls in love with her. The woman's played by Meryl Streep, and he, this is Albert right. Brooks. Okay, go ahead. Albert sorry. Brooks, yeah. yeah. So no, that's a good summation of it. And, yeah. and essentially, I think the, you know, if you if you take the thirty thousand foot view on this, it's um, it's a little bit of a cynical outlook on humanity um, that we all live in fear, and right. kind of the ideas that those people who live on Earth are 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 completely living in fear and you only use them a very, very small portion of your brain. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you transcend that, as you overcome your fear, you use more and more of your brain and you move on to your next life in another part of the universe and so on and whatever. But they, they poke fun a lot at, uh, at human existence and they poke fun at the earth and that kind of stuff. And these small little jabs, which I, I thought, again, detailed stuff, but it was really good. Yeah. Uh, Rip Torn was awesome, of course. It was. <laughs> so it was funny, so man. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as hell. But I heard Los Angeles is getting pretty close. Yeah, so, <laughs> and know. the way he laughed. The way yeah, he, I know. Yeah, it's so, a little so over, overly cheesy on purpose, which was yeah, great. great. Yeah, so. um, but anyway, my point on the pacing was that, uh, and, and I think this is... I, I was telling Elzeth when we sit down to watch it, Albert Brooks, you got to get in, get in the right frame of mind to watch his stuff, right? Yeah, it's kind of Seinfeld-ish. It's real dry, real straight face humor stuff. Um, but it's very clever. It's very observant. It's very, right. uh, you know, the humor in it is, uh, it's not quite sophisticated, I don't think, but it is clever. It's not fart jokes, right? Right. Um, but anyway, the in, in the opening scenes there where they're like, where they're pushing the wheelchairs, they're they're establishing where we are. Uh, Albert Brooks just got hit by a car or, or by a bus and he's, he's, uh, you know, getting transported to, uh, which I thought the whole setup was really cool. Um, but they, they stretch those scenes out. Like you get the idea pretty quick that he's in this, he's in this wheelchair and he can't really talk. He can't move because, uh, all the, all the lead up to that, you see, he's sort of an anxiety ridden person, you know, and he's real fidgety and all that sort of stuff. And then he's sitting there and he's just observing the world around him as he's getting pushed around with these old people around him. And you, you get the idea pretty quick that he can't he can't really speak. He can't, you know, he can't function. Uh, he's just observing. But they stretch those scenes 
just long enough for you're about to say to yourself like, okay, move on. And then they, they move just before you get to that point. Mm -hmm. And they do that numerous times throughout there. All the time they get to the hotel and they're riding the tram, which they, 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 <laughs> I think that was awesome. The tram, the whole tram thing back and forth there. They, they, um, what do they call it? Judgment city is where yeah. you go. And, uh, they're moving these people around on these trams, just like a Disney world, which I thought was freaking funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, they hold those tram scenes just long enough, and you're, you're thinking to yourself, like, all right, I get it, and then boom, they've, they've, they've cut to the next part. And so uh, I thought that that was very, very good movie making because it keeps you interested. Um, whereas, like we were talking about the Marvel things, it's kind of like just the opposite. Man, they just blast you with information, like, constantly, and the scenes are all cut so super short. Um, and I, this has to do probably with our attention spans and whatever, getting shorter and shorter. But um, <clears throat> onto the story, I thought it was just a classic, uh, a classic good story arc from the character, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's Albert Brooks. I mean, again, mm -hmm. if if you like that sort of stuff, you will like it for sure. I, I loved it. I think Albert Brooks is great. And, you know, it's funny to me when I observe movies like this and Seinfeld, I should like Woody Allen. Mm. I should, because this is not very far off from Woody Allen. Right. It's cynical, sarcastic, edgy, all this, but I cannot fucking stand Woody Allen, man. I hate yeah. that guy. Well, I think, I think he's, he's just a creeper, you know? Oh, well, that's, there's that, you know, you yeah. know, you can't, it's hard to but separate. I can't, I can't get over that when I'm watching. No, no, you can't separate him from, from who he is in real life. And yeah. also I, I would say probably a little bit of the difference is that, uh, that, that this Albert Brooks movie and and he hasn't done a lot. I mean, you know, mm. he's done a few, but uh, but Albert Albert Brooks, especially in this movie, his neuroses is kind of in the background. You know, mm -hmm. Woody Allen wears it on his sleeve. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, totally, yeah. But uh, but um, yeah. there was a lot of there was a lot of cool things about it. Um, the the trajectory that the characters take. Um, it takes a, I don't want to say a long time, but I want to say he doesn't meet the, the, the movie is like an hour and 55 minutes. And I don't think he actually meets her until about 30 minutes in. Uh -huh. So it's kind of far into the film compared to, to modern films uh, right. before he even meets Meryl Streep. Right. But as soon as he meets her, it's evident what's going to happen. Yeah. But it's enjoyable to, to watch the journey, right? It's enjoyable to watch them sort of, um, collide you know real slow um, gentle collision with each other and their souls in this in this strange place that they're in and whatever right um but uh, i thought there was a lot of great scenes the whole comedy club thing was freaking funny as hell awesome uh, that was so good. <laughs> it's terrible jokes she had that guy was great I love, I love when uh when uh she he asked him how did he die and he goes on stage like you just like you yeah <laughs> well, good, yeah. like the, the the humor in this uh you know there, there's there's like laugh out loud humor and then there's like laugh then there's humor that just kind of makes you smile this is kind yeah. of probably closer to the, the stuff that just makes you smile but right. i'm definitely like like physically laughing at some oh, of the i laughed out loud numerous times i yeah. was looking i was cracking up i love i love the part where he's i can't remember like oh yeah he's on the, the tram and this woman is sitting behind him and she wants to tell him a story uh, about, 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 a dog. Dog, yeah. about a dog and he goes sure and and she starts talking and they cut away and they cut back and he's sitting there and, he, and he's just like <laughs> you know he's got this like, painful, oh, yeah. yeah it's painful and we've all been in that situation yeah, yeah. and yeah. uh but, and you kind of mentioned uh how the people there and the big joke was that or one of the jokes was that they, they called the people that were coming little brains because they didn't use a lot of their brains. Right. They were used more. And somehow they, they felt that they were elevated, but they didn't, they were condescending, but not condescending so much. It was almost right. like a kind, kind condescension. But in right. reality, uh, the both, you know, him and Meryl Streep, Julia uh, were, were pretty much more dialed in than these people were. You know, mm. uh, it's almost mm. like they had forgotten their humanity, maybe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, well, they were just grinding through the process, really, yeah. you know, which I did think was kind of cool that they assigned uh, they assigned each person that got there, got a, essentially a, they called them a defender, which is essentially kind of a lawyer. And then there was right. a prosecutor. And the idea was that the universe, uh, the prosecutor works for the universe and um, the universe does not want you moving forward and leaving Earth until you're ready, because right. otherwise you'll you'll muck up the works of the universe. Right. 
And so it was the prosecutor's job to to really grill you on have you overcome your fears. And it was the defender's job to sort of stick up for you. And uh, I loved the way <laughs> Albert Brooks was just like jumping right on board. Anytime Rip Torn would say something that was like in his defense, he's like, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah no, I know. <laughs> like, I'm really enjoying this. I, mean, uh, I, I know there was this there was this clear story arc with him and Julia, Meryl Streep, right? Yes. But, but, they, they, but there was lots of these points where they were just like, OK, we need some humor here. And so kind of on the outside, like there was a part where they they were and they would show like what were essentially videos of their lives, uh, chunks of their lives. And there was one part with like Albert Brooks where it wasn't even about him overcoming fear. It was just him doing sh stupid shit, like mm. like gar like gargling with shampoo rather than mouth. Right. <laughs> well, that was the montage that she yeah. put together of all yeah. the bad mistakes or not oh, the bad God. decisions that he had <laughs> made. Yeah. <laughs> he locked himself in the car and he was trying to get the clothes hanger to open the door from the outside. <laughs> it was so funny. And so again, uh, like like though there was the and and like him just being funny you know to say yeah. funny shit like when when his defender was absent and the in the uh, buck henry defender came in and wasn't yeah when, when he's like oh, he didn't well, say anything yeah didn't say anything it's like oh you're fucking doing a great job yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that sarcasm was good yeah <laughs> yeah sarcasm. That was great and, yeah. and i will say that i i don't i'm not a big meryl streep fan um yeah. but i liked her in this movie because of her softness you know i liked her um, her character was such a good contrast to him, but she was um, as as an actress, she wasn't like oftentimes she takes over, you know, and I guess maybe that's good and people like her for that or whatever. But I liked her in this because she didn't try to upstage him. Um, you know, she was just soft and this pleasant person. And, and you know, the story remained about him, although she was very much his his counterpart. Uh, the story stayed about him, and I like that because um, well, oftentimes that that doesn't happen, you know. Right. To make a comparison, uh, kind of a very loose comparison, of something you said during our Tarantino uh, podcast, like uh, I feel uh, about her in this movie the way I felt about like Lewis and Jackie Brown, the Robert De Niro character. I don't mm -hmm. typically like like Robert De Niro is usually kind mm -hmm. of maybe a little bit overpowering and so forth in his roles. I liked him in that. Cause he seemed to, he, he practiced, he practiced the necessary restraint. Same with her in this. I mean, yes. uh, yeah, she seemed to be like a, she played a, she played a, a, a brave housewife really yeah. well. You know what I mean? Yeah. But she was a good co-star, right? That yeah. was, that was her yeah. role. And she did that really well. It wasn't, yeah. um, it was, you know, she wasn't trying to take over, uh, no. which was great because I mean, yeah. this movie was totally, you know, he wrote and directed this and starred oh. in it. So, I mean, yeah. it was like, this is all Albert Brooks, man. So, right. Yeah. And some of the, some of this, I, I, you know, was reading a little bit about it. The whole uh, thing with Meryl Streep is, like I guess, oh, he's friends with he's friends with Carrie Fisher. That's what it was. He was friends okay. with Carrie Fisher. He went out to lunch with her, and I guess, you know, she commented on Meryl Streep, and and uh, and he's like, "There's no, you know, there's no fucking way, you know, uh, you know, like right. so maybe she might be interested." And his his uh, initial uh, inclination before he met her was to turn her down because she's Meryl Streep, right? You know, right, right. choice and all that shit, right? Kramer versus Kramer. And when he and so he felt like you know she would be you know too you know my word highfalutin to be in the, be in mm -hmm, his movie. Mm -hmm. and when he met her he was like oh man she's freaking great she's uh, very down to earth and and was very pleasant to be with and and and, cool. and she's, well I mean that that yeah. came across on film as far as yeah, I could yeah. tell. Yeah, yeah, big time, you know, so. No, it was good. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, the, the the cheesy, super sappy, cheesy ending, but satisfying, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. yep. Um, he came full circle and overcame his fear and, you know, <laughs> they lived happily ever after and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and he, uh, he did the, he he was, I mean, Albert Brooks is uh, more known for, like, writing and, and directing and all that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. a good actor, you know what I mean? He, yeah, I, no, I, I thought he was awesome. Yeah, so I think we're again we kind of agree on this one. So I don't I don't know yeah. what else we could say about it. I would recommend it, you know. So if well, has... I would say I would say again. Uh, I think I said this on one of the previous films that that we reviewed. Uh, this is another example in my mind of really really good storytelling, just solid. You know, uh, spectacular. You know, fireworks, earth shattering. No, but. Um, really at the core at the root of storytelling this is very good and um you know as, as not to get too deep but as human beings that's how we relate to the world stories right you have a story and 
I happen to be part of your story and you happen to be part of my story and so on. And um, everybody's story is, is, is somewhat individual. And so that's how we relate to the world. And so this one, to me, connected on a, on a really basic level that was just good. It mm-hmm. was just solid. So, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did. I, I didn't, of course, I thought you hadn't seen it, but I remember seeing it when it was in the movie theater. And uh, I don't think I saw in the movie theater. I well, might have, like, gosh, man, eons ago. Well, you said 91, it came out. I might have uh, rented the DVD or something at some point, or the VHS, right. even, you but, know. I, yeah, I, but I, it was I saw, so long ago. I barely remembered it. I, I may have seen it once or twice more, like maybe in the early 90s, you know, and then mm-hmm. hadn't seen it in the 30 years since it came out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I was wondering how it would hold up. I think in a way, some of the stuff even kind of got better because you mentioned the trams and and so forth. That was in the way the the, the uh, kind of the mid century uh, uh, kind of design of of the Judgment City. And, and and for anybody listening, the whole concept is that when you're in Judgment City, they don't want you to worry about anything at all. So it's almost like living. It's almost like vacationing in in San Diego. The weather's perfect. The food mm. is delicious. The accommodations mm. are. Are, are great. And I, I thought that was funny how, because Meryl Streep, if, if, if anybody isn't catching on, you know, her, her character uh, who, who they, they end up connecting and falling in love. She's a shoe in to move on. I mean, and so it yeah. seems like she's getting a lot of preferential treatment because of just how good she was as a human being. She's staying in a better hotel and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it was all done with, with all that. I love the humor around that. Yeah. Like, very good taste as well in terms of yeah. like how that, how that difference was displayed. It was, it was very good taste. <laughs> what was another point I wanted to bring up? Sorry, but I know you're going to yeah, say something funny here, but uh, go ahead, go ahead. And no, I was going to say, I thought it was funny. how like, she said something like uh like she was talking about their hotel or hotel, and she goes, aren't the, chocolate- jacuzzi? Yeah, aren't, the chocolate- aren't the chocolate jacuzzi? Aren't the chocolate swans delicious? He's like, chocolate swans. What he goes, I got breath mints. I got breath mints. <laughs> that gave me breath mints. <laughs> oh, do you got a jacuzzi? No, I don't no, have jacuzzi. No, and then she's like, uh, yeah, I don't either. No, no. Goes, I think it's just holes in the bathtub. And she goes, he goes, it sounds like a jacuzzi. Because it is, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, the other point that I wanted to bring up real quick is um, this: this when, when we were in film schools, one of the things that we were taught, um, and, and this is a good experiment that you and I might even try to tackle this one day. Sure. Um, show don't tell. Right. That's 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 the rule. Uh, as much as you possibly can. This is a visual medium. So show don't tell. An example that I always like to use for this is is you saw Inception, right? Right. Yeah. You remember that. That female character that was sort of like a, she was like an assistant mm-hmm. for DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Well, when she comes in as an assistant, her only role is to ask the question that the audience need needs to ask, right? So her 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 role there is exposition, right? Well, to to provide yes. a, a an ear for exposition, which of course just explains to the audience the super complex dream within a dream within a dream stuff. Right. How the hell can you show that? It's really difficult, right? In this film, uh, there was a lot of show and, and and a little bit of tell. For example, real small stuff too. But to me, this adds up to make a great movie. When he first gets to his hotel room, he tries to tip the guy. He hasn't even said anything. He can't even talk yet, right? The idea is that you've gone through this traumatic, your soul has has left your body on earth and now you're here. And uh, he goes to tip the guy and his, his hand doesn't work really well, right? And it gets stuck in his little pajama thingy and he's trying to tip the guy and and uh, and the guy's like, oh, I doubt you're going to find anything in there, but I appreciate the gesture. And um, and that was sort of like, I guess, kind of like, you know, in an emotional way, that was the end of his day. And the guy says, you know, sleep well or whatever, and he walks out. But then when Albert Brooks goes to lay down on the bed to, to sleep, I mean, that was excellent, excellent acting because it wasn't dramatic. You know, flop himself on the bed. He just like, I, I don't know, I'm sure you've been this tired. He just literally like crawled into the bed and you could see him like he's grabbing onto the onto the bed. He's like, oh, my God, I just want to lay down, man. And so to me, all that stuff adds up. Some of it you might not even notice, but it all adds up to like character, like it shows you him, you know, as a as a person. And it's relatable. It's all stuff that you can kind of relate to. <laughs> and then the other thing is like when I mentioned pacing. I counted. Uh, they let the phone ring eight times before he picked it up. Wow. And they don't do that nowadays, right? Ring, ring, hello. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so he was coming out of his sleep, and the phone rang and rang and rang, and the camera's real slowly moving, real slowly moving. 
and then he finally picks up the phone. But again, it's that it, it kind of builds a little bit of anticipation, you know, right. as you're waiting. So, well, but then, well, then he, well, yeah. he's got rip torn on the other one. And also, you talk about ex, ex, exposition uh, and and the need for like a narrative, you know, a narrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, this movie, when they when and they did do that some in this movie, but when they when they did it, it made sense. And and usually when you saw it, it was when. Albert Brooks was talking to Rip Torn, Bob, his his lawyer, right? right. His defender. right. But it made sense because, you know, clearly Albert Brooks didn't know didn't know what's going on. Didn't know what's going on. So when so when he's having to kind of explain things to him, but 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 that was that was very summarized. And there was actually a part in there where where uh where Albert Brooks is asking questions and you could tell like Bob is starting to get irritated, a little irritated with him. And he's like, Wow, you're really an inquisitive guy, aren't you? You know, he basically okay. was like, like, uh, like people don't ask as many questions, but but yes. it, his explanations were again summarized. But it was unlike a movie nowadays, like where two people that are you know, like that are on on even on an even playing field, they both have the same knowledge talking to each other about like in other words like we've got to go in this house and invade we do, we, we know there's three guys in there and blah 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 and it's like you have to bring the nine millimeters yeah, we have to be, exactly we need to make sure that make sure that when you shoot you aim for the torso in the head and yeah yeah so you, see, you know we don't you know and that's today's movie but, yeah and then see the other part of it is that they they do that before the action right so right. they they kind of set you up for what you're about to see well this movie was the other way man they showed you all this stuff about him transitioning into this this weird world and then you get caught up mm -hmm. right when he sits down with rip torn he catches you up oh yeah this is where you are and this is why you're here right. and you know what i mean and so um again it kind of gives the audience a little bit of credit for being smart enough to like you figured most of it out and really all Rip Torn is doing is giving the details. Right. 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 That's not really a trial. It's just a, you know, whatever. Right. So. Well, the fear and the fear thing too, honestly, uh, that's, that, that was a concept just to kind of move the story forward. If you can pick, you can poke holes in that all day long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, yeah, you know, but, absolutely. But, but it was just, it was just yeah. the idea. So. Was, yeah. It's the idea. Cause the truth is that it, technically speaking, you could actually overcome. It was just almost like with Catholicism, you can get saved the last day and all those other sins don't matter. They wash away. Yeah. Yeah, and this you basically, if you had overcome fear, you know, two days before you died, you would be fine. You know, yeah. uh, well, so, that's what he ended up doing, right? At the, right, at the end, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but, but, so all the watching what it was like when you were eight years old, who gives a shit? Yeah. So, uh, so it was uh, pretty funny though. That costume design and shit was great when he oh, was in school. Good, yeah. No, little kid with the little little fuzzy hair, you know, little oh, burlo yeah. head. Well, he yeah, did look like he did look like a like a Albert Brooks. Oh uh, yeah, man. Yeah, but I thought the whole thing with the BMW and the, uh, and flashback to the whole, you know, your car's got a CD player. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it does. You said you wanted the best, and that comes with the CD player. And then he was, <laughs> he was looking through those CDs and those great big cardboard things, you know, so people didn't steal them. Remember that? Yeah. What What was the? It, it was funny because they first showed him like a seven series or something like that. And then he goes, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. Did he, what did he say? Because then he goes, shows my car, and he goes, God, mm -hmm. man. He goes, Yeah, you know. shouldn't show people the seven series first. Now my car looks like a turd. <laughs> <laughs> and he's driving like a 325 convertible uh, beamer in, in, the, uh, in the 90s. So, still a nice car, though. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's fun. But, that's uh, cool. But, uh, anyway, but, yeah, so that's a good one. I would say, you know, one to 10, I'd probably give that one an eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's not, it's not a complex story. It's a, I will no. say it's a very unique story. I do like the idea, but that's one thing that grabbed me about this initially, the love mm. story. Yeah. I like that. I did. I, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a softie. It was, it was nice. Yeah, but, yeah whatever. It's nice. It, yeah. It's nice. But the whole idea about going to an afterlife, another thing I read that about Albert Brooks is he actually gets uh, messages in e email and it was said to this day, I don't know when the article was written, he gets to this day that, that people that are actually kind of terminal or in hospice watch their movie and it may watch that movie and it makes them feel good because, because it, just the concept of there being an afterlife, you know, makes them feel, mm. makes, it gives them sure. some hope, you know, even, even though, so I thought Which it was is like, interesting. And that, yeah. you know, to me for, for an artist like him, you know, it, it, call him an artist or whatever, is, yeah, whatever choose the medium, but um, that's gotta be, that's gotta be the better payoff. It's great right. to get the money and all that sort of stuff, but it's gotta right. be, you know, as a human, it's gotta be good right. to right. get that sort of feedback because I mean, you know, when your work has impact, yeah, I think that matters. That's why people go into medicine, right? You're going to save people, do good things for people, right? And yeah. when you when you can create art that actually does that, I think that that's awesome. Whereas nowadays they just, they're, they're creating art, very loosely termed art, uh, just to make a bunch of money. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Avatar two, right? Whatever. 
Yeah, I know. I'm on, but I, I may see it when it comes out on a, on HBO or something. Yeah, so um, see when you force me to watch it for the podcast. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I I saw the first one and and uh, the first Avatar, and I thought I thought the 3D effects were pretty cool. One of the funny stories I wanted to tell tell about that is uh, is uh, I had a a friend I worked with, and uh, and he that he was he was very uh, very green, very climate change, the whole nine yards, mm-hmm. lots of stuff, you know, not to go down that, but that was always something he always preached, and he had he had seen it. This is when that movie first came out, and I went to go see it. And I thought, yeah, you know, I thought it was just a yeah, it was it's very it was a lot of candy for the eyes, right? Mm-hmm. But, but I. But I immediately fell back on the whole like, yeah, man, this is just dances with wolves. It just it's a story that's mm-hmm. been a thousand yeah. times, right? And uh, and then, but I, I, when he went to go see it, uh, I was talking to him a couple days afterwards. He's a coasty, by the way, so it's makes you up in the Coast Guard episode. Uh, I I said, uh, what did you think? And he's like, ah, oh, it's freaking terrible. And I go, what did you not <laughs> like about it? And he goes, uh, he goes, the dialogue, the dialogue was was horrendous. And and I go really, and he goes, yeah, like the one part where Michelle Rodriguez was flying that thing, and uh, and they were shooting at her, and she says made some sort of comment like, "You're not the only one with a big gun, too." And I was like, "Yeah, you're right. That's some freaking terrible dialogue. That's, That's awesome terrible. dialogue. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, man. Anyway, man. I mean, you know, then I tried to watch something the other day. We turned it on. I can't remember what it was, but I I I choked on it. I just could not watch it. Yeah, and like, I, and it was my pick too because we were like poking around trying to trying to find something to watch. I mean, like, because we had finished whatever series we were watching, I was like, "Oh, let's try this." And we put it on, and I'm like, "Jeez, man, five minutes in, I'm like, oh, I can't take it. It was terrible." I will say, I just burned through uh, uh, the Night Agent on uh, on Netflix. Mm, we're watching that now. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? Mm. Uh, it's not horrible. I don't. Know, it's, it's. I think. It's, it feels to me like it's going in somewhat of a predictable hmm? kind of a pathway, but um, it's 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 not terrible. I would say that it's good for what what's out there right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would probably agree with that. So. Yeah. All right. So the hunter. Oh, so the hunter. Yeah. So oh, so I had seen this. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, but I'd forgotten. Same deal. Long that. time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. I, I did kind of remember my my feelings about it when I saw it, I, and uh, and I was uh, 1980, so I I was probably. Like I don't know, thirteen years old when it came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my feelings hadn't changed much, and so uh, the best way I can kind of describe this: this is kind of like a a mediocre uh, Barnaby Jones episode. That's kind of the vibe. <laughs> <I got. laughs> okay. <laughs> so so it's like uh, you know I, I okay. So let me let me let me clue everybody in onto the movie real quick. Okay. So the movie the movie's called The Hunter, and it's about it's based on a a, a real guy. It's a yep. story about a bounty hunter, and um, I'm not sure how much liberties they've taken in terms of his personal relationship or whatever. But mm. apparently he was uh, this dude was a bounty hunter and uh, a good one, and they had a good reputation, and uh, he he got a lot of bounties you know and so the story basically takes place where it's um i guess kind of towards the end of his career and uh he's got a he's got a girlfriend not a wife he's got a girlfriend who's pregnant when mm-hmm. when was this do you think 70s probably well the like, movie was the movie came out in 1980 so probably it was set in like in the mid 70s yeah maybe yeah so, yeah. yeah mid to late 70s what it looks like um yeah, and so uh, yeah, he just you know his his whole existence is he goes down and tracks down uh, tracks down bounties and stuff for for um, bail bondsmen. Which bail bondsman? Was, oh, what's his name there? Tuco. Oh, Eli Wallach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Eli Wallach. Yeah, which yeah. he was great in this as well. But anyway, um, he was. <laughs> but the thing that I thought was interesting is that that he. he it was like a little bit of leftover stuff from the sixties, you know, where he had all these people always hanging around his house and his girlfriend and him were sort of kind of, they were together, but they weren't married. And they played that whole thing about marriage as a, you know, a confinement they didn't need. And she obviously was, uh, wanted to get married because she was very, very pregnant and whatever. So, um, yeah, the, basically the story is how he, how he copes with that, you know, how he's kind of very traditional and he's, he's trying to move into the modern world. So, yeah. So you, Barnaby Jones, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, for. well, some thoughts. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, definitely not 1980 and this was starring Steve McQueen, you know, mm-hmm. 
And, uh, and, and if anybody's listening, that's listening to this and doesn't know who Steve McQueen is, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, turn he, off the podcast and yeah, uh, go, yeah. go do a little something research, else. but he, uh, he, you know, and I, and I did kind of go back and like read some of his little bit about him, a little bit of his biography, uh, you know, uh, 19, I think he was born like in 1930. So he was 50, uh, mm. when he died, you know, so, so he died like right after this movie came out he died of a, a mesothelioma, which is, uh, you know, he was exposed to asbestos smoked. You know, mm. and those he was days, a race car driver. Yeah, yeah, but you know, and that's probably that may have been where the asbestos came from because you know fire, right. was fire retardant suits and things. Right. But uh, but he, you know, so he died shortly after this. Uh, he, but uh, and I'm gonna say something now. This is this is my my uh, kind of just uh, opinion, and uh, I I uh, I've never been a huge uh, fan of Steve McQueen as an actor. Mm. I think I think he's amazing as like a a the definitive example of. Uh, mid-century to 1970 masculinity he's a man's man he is the man i agree with you 100 percent. yeah the epitome of man's man the only the the only movie and i haven't seen a whole lot of steve mcqueen movies uh i've seen uh i've seen uh 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 the The great escape uh Mm -hmm. and i and i love that movie but he doesn't Mm -hmm. really play a huge role in that yeah he's not he's not the main guy yeah no uh but he's great in it he's actually really Mm -hmm. good in it i mean the motorcycle scene I, I've I seen actually it. think that was his best movie. Personally. Yes, I, I didn't think Bullet was his best movie. Bullet was his most famous movie, but yeah, I didn't think that was his best. Yeah, and Bullet, uh, Bullet, uh, like I said, the, I liked Bullet, but uh, why do you think I liked Bullet? Right, the car, the car, yeah, the car, the car chase scene was amazing. Yeah. I want to yeah. go back and watch it right now. And then this, yeah. I've seen this, and uh, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I'm just not. I, I just wasn't on board with Steve McQueen in this. I mean, he, it seemed like he almost kind of phoned it in. And uh, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, but the story uh, is, is just, you know, it's, it's kind of just all over the place. Uh, like I said, like you, you mentioned, the co- you made a comment, like, I want to talk about this movie because uh, kind of the throwback, uh, kind of the throw, I don't know, you didn't say throwback, but it, but it, mm. it, it, there was a lot there, it really represented a, a lot of things that were kind of, more kind of historical now, I guess, in, in, mm-hmm. in film. But to me, it, that, felt, it felt to me like it was accurate for the time. Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't know. Because, yeah. because again, there seems like like they would go into a bar and it would be like a go-go bar. And literally it reminded me of like, oh, I think I saw that set on the Rockford Files. You know, there was a lot of that, mm-hmm. you know. And mm-hmm. and I, I thought like when he went to Chicago, that was a, that was a, a nice scene, nice action mm-hmm. scene. But, but you know, the, the, the city streets in Chicago, which looked like, probably it looks like it does now, you know, because it was... Yeah. Uh, Just a little cleaner back then. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And so, uh, so things like that. But, but... Uh, just like I never thought it was all that action packed, you know. I never mm-hmm. was all that kind of invested in the character. I never, you know, I don't know. I just it, I, like I said, I remember as a kid thinking, you know, they advertised it as this, you know, am- amazing kind of. Oh my gosh, Steve McQueen! It's going to be freaking cool. He's going to be awesome, uh-huh. you know, because I knew about Bullet and all that kind of stuff. I remember watching it, just kind of going like, eh. And that's kind of how I feel about it now. I just I watched it and uh, I. I, you know, the relationship he had with his girlfriend was seemed a little bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked her, you know, so. Yeah, no, they, she was great. They chuck, um, LeVar, they chuck LeVar Burton in there. Uh, yeah. Capture, you know, so, yeah, I don't know. This wasn't, wasn't my thing. I mean, I didn't hate yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny because I, you and I agree uh, kind of wholeheartedly uh, in terms of that as a film. Um, I, I agree. It did feel like he kind of phoned it in. Um, there was one or two scenes where he kind of like sparked a little bit and that's when they when he had that he was drunk and he had that confrontation with her and yeah. he said she should have aborted the baby and they, you yeah. know, that was a good confrontation that was a, I, that was really good i agree um, that that was the only time i was like okay now we're out uh, now we're outside the barnaby jones umbrella yes now we're out of the same zone. barnaby jones yeah no yeah yeah, yeah. So that was pretty good. But um all the rest of the stuff, I mean, uh you know, it was it was just north of a dud. I wouldn't call it a complete dud. Right. Uh, because it was there was some interesting parts to it. But uh I think the thing that struck me the most about it, and this is why I wanted to talk to you about it, was the was the the you know, you get nostalgic when you look at certain things from certain time periods, right? But this one really, really hit home for me because when I was growing up, that all that stuff was was lingering, right? So I was aware. I was born in 65, so by the time 77, 78 came around, I was a preteen, young teen, and I was becoming aware of all of this stuff. And and that style was uh, 
the, the style of that film was like my life, man. And the whole push towards women's lib, that whole, that sh- Lamaz, that was like, holy crap. I remember hearing that from, and I had neighbors and I had, there was teenage pregnancies in my neighborhood and stuff. And I, thank God we are a family of all boys. So we, we never had that in our house, but, um, but yeah, I remember hearing about it all the time and, and the clothes and the, and there was still plenty of people who smoked, but then there was also people that were becoming more uh, uh, health conscious, you know what I mean? Runners and all that kind of stuff. So there was, and all of that played into this film in terms of the social sort of the social tension of that late seventies period where, where people were starting to kind of try to wake up and like, let's move out of the hangover from the sixties. You know what I mean? That's kind of what it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. Um, there were, there were people like his girlfriend that were trying to push forward and, 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 uh, kind of embrace a new way of, of living and stuff. And he was stuck in the old way. It's all he knew. And, um, so I, I thought that part was pretty good, but all those dudes hanging around his house, the midget and stuff, it's just like, that's kind of like my dad had a lot of that stuff, man. It was always crazy ass people hanging around our house and they were gambling and stuff, but. Um, but as a police officer, he knew lots of weirdos, um, and they, yeah, they, they were around a lot. So anyway, all that struck me as, I was like, that reminds me of life when I was a kid. That's yeah. kind of how it felt, you know, the vibe, the overall vibe. Yeah. I, and when I watched this, it, yeah, the, the, you know, I felt, I did feel that connection to like the seventies, you know, mm. I felt like, you know, this movie again came out in 1980. So right. a lot of the way, you know, the, 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 the way it was filmed, even the type of film that was used, right. you know, the way it looked, you know, the way right. this, it was all seventies, right? It, it got released 70s. in the eighties. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, it was 19, all done like, in the seventies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, and, and, and again, when I make the comment about like Barnaby Jones, the Rockford files, right. the mod squad, it looked like to me, it looked like that those right. TV shows from that time. I mean, maybe a little bit more, uh, towards the you know it being a film, so you know yeah, there's a little more production value yeah, right because exactly. it had Steve McQueen's name on it, yeah, and whatever. And, but yeah, and, certainly and, not leaps and bounds. Yeah, and Barnaby Jones, they weren't going to blow up a Trans Am. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, oh uh, shit! Did, yeah. did they tear up that Trans Am or what, they man? Fuck that Trans Am up, man. But yeah, but, uh, which was fun. I, and that, those were scenes. I I thought it was funny. I mean. The joke went a little too far about how you yes. know, shitty driver, uh, yeah. but uh, because that's ridiculous. And I guess yes. the point they're playing on the fact that he was a race car driver too in real right. life. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but I um, mean, the 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 two guys with the dynamite wants to trash the car. I mean, he yeah. he did some damage to it, but they really trashed it. They but, trashed it. Yeah, they took yeah. out the cornfield and the cornfield. But seemed, I mean, that that yeah. that it's all this on the nose stuff. Like I don't know who who wrote this or who directed or any of that stuff because i never do that kind of research but to me it felt like we got a mediocre story let's try to beef it up with steve mcqueen you know what i mean and the 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 characters that he was after there the two brothers with the dynamite and and all that it's total cartoon characters total stereotypes right um you know they're funny they were they were funny they're like ha, they were stupid rednecks or whatever um and then, but I did like the the black kid that he caught early in the film, Lavar Burton. Lavar Burton, that's it. Yep. Um, he like you could tell he was going to be a good actor because this was if it wasn't his first role, it must have been one of his first roles, right? Um, but you could tell like he was solid as an actor, um, right? Well, young the- still and inexperienced, but yeah. you could tell he had a good screen presence about him. Right. I mean, and, and the whole point there and what Doug is talking about that, that, you know, that uh, Papa Thornton, the, the body bounty hunter was such a good hearted guy that he opened up his house to a lot of the individuals that he uh, he brought in for bounty and they would come back. And and this guy, uh, LeVar Burton character, this guy named Tommy, uh, ended up at his house, too. And uh and trying he, to fix his TV and stuff. Yeah, for, like, yeah. That was that was the, the other running joke. And another running joke in here was the fact that he was supposedly was was a. Uh, 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 kind of electronic nerd or whatever, but, but he, he was can, ter- but he was terrible at it. Yeah, yeah he, he couldn't but, actually ever fix anything. Yeah, so he took every all his shit apart in his house. But uh, but yeah, I mean all that. But like I said, like you talk about it, uh, where I put this, you know, I watched it. You know, in uh, we could probably compare it to today's movies, and I'd pr- I'd still prefer to watch The Hunter. But yeah, uh, yeah but, agreed. I but you know, I guess 
when you're when you're told it's a st- and and like I said, I looked at this retrospectively and I was like, I'm not a I now have to admit I'm not a Steve McQueen fan as an actor. I'm not okay, but right. at the time I was like, oh, Steve McQueen, you know, that's yeah, yeah. pretty awesome. He's must be everybody tells me he's awesome. And then when I watch his movie, I'm like, yeah, well, I. And and and, it, and I'm, it even goes beyond his acting not being you know him being somewhat one note. It just wasn't action packed, and then not a whole lot happened. Yeah, you know, wasn't you know, a great story. Wasn't a great story, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also to your point about this guy Papa Thornton, yeah, I, I looked that up. Yeah, he was a bounty hunter, nineteen seventies. He did all kinds of stuff. I do think he had a girlfriend. I think she was pregnant. I think they had a kid. So I don't know how much okay. of that stuff. I don't. Maybe think, that's maybe that was a story like that's what changed him or something. Or uh, who knows, you know. And who knows, then, yeah. And then the whole the, there's they also kind of rolled in this this individual who uh, wanted to kill him because he arrested him and that just that was that like, was buffoonish yeah it was like fifteen seconds fifteen minutes long you know it didn't didn't really yeah. amount to anything yeah it was now, also I thought you know in terms of in terms of like being an audience member in this I thought it was very anticlimactic. When the one guy that he was chasing, he went to Chicago. He was he didn't want to he wanted, he didn't want to go get this guy because this guy was a known shooter, right? Right. He's fine if you had to chase somebody down and get into a fight and cuff him. He was fine with that, but he didn't want to get into the whole shooting thing. But he needed the money for the kid, so um, off he went to get to Chicago to get this guy. And then, uh, gosh, man, how long was that chase scene? Freaking hell! Right. I mean, I love the I love the the brutality of that dude when he jumps on the subway and grabs a little kid as a shield. Right. That was great, you know. Right. But right. then it turned into the stupid hanging off the side of the the train on the right on the electrical things or whatever. But but yeah. then when he finally corners the guy, he drives off of a fifteen story circular parking garage into the river. I'm like, come on, man. Right. That was so <laughs> non satisfying, you know. I, I will tell you, it's funny because you mentioned the the foot chase. When that foot chase foot chase started, in uh, as I said before, I de- didn't remember a whole lot about that movie. But mm-hmm. I remember when it started. I thought to myself, "Oh gosh, I remember when like uh, action packed foot chases in movies were a thing, and I loved them." You know, so yeah. I was actually excited because I was like, "Cool!" and uh, and it was like the slowest foot chase. Like ever, you know what I mean, like, like, and and it's not because Steve McQueen, because Steve McQueen actually, and again in the research, he was actually in pretty good shape. Uh, right to the point where he died, he, you know, it worked out and everything uh, between cartons of cigarettes. But uh, uh, but so so it just wasn't. It was like, oh my gosh, now they're on the roof, and yeah. it's like, not a lot's happening, you know. And now they're on the subway, yeah. and, they're, and they're in a crowd, and he's having to like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Yeah. You're like, you're like, oh god. So yeah, I mean, it already. Yeah, am I, am I, it, it, I? I think now we can. I think we can both admit action is better in a lot of movies nowadays. But yeah. sto- story is not. Well, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's true because I think that um, you know technology has helped in that, right? Um, and I was thinking just the other day. Um, well, as a matter of fact, uh, in the Albert Brooks movie, I was just mentioning to Elzeth like there was probably. Just in the scene where they're all in the wheelchairs, there was probably a hundred people in that scene, mm-hmm. you know, but half of those people in wheelchairs. So somebody in the prop department and in the wardrobe department had to get all those people scrubs and they had to get all those wheelchairs and they had to get all of those gowns and all of that stuff. And none of that was CGI. So to me, that it doesn't make it better. Um, but what it does is it makes it more uh, real, I guess. So, but, but chase scenes and stuff like that with technology, the way it is with small cameras like GoPros and little things like that, even the reds that they're using to film uh, a lot of films now, um, they're little and, and they can, they can get them places and they can, I don't know if you've ever seen any behind the scenes stuff when they do some of these chases, but they have, they have rigs on these cameras, like a cage around the camera and it's got handles on it and they will run with the actors and when they'll get to a, a certain scene, they'll actually take the camera as they're running. They'll take the camera and hand it off to the next guy and keep the camera moving. And you can't, it's seamless. You can't see it as an audience member. Uh, but what those guys are doing with the camera is pretty freaking amazing. Right. Uh, you know, the, the real physical stuff that they're doing. And then, of course, they bring it into CGI and they add all the backgrounds. And I mean, maybe that chase scene happens on Mars or, you know, in some city that they didn't have to close down the streets and all of that. So... Uh, from the filmmaking perspective, technology has helped a lot with making those types of scenes more fun, you know. Um, and I think about uh, 
things like the fifth element, um, you know, stuff like that, those, those crazy scenes in the fifth element. Um, yeah. The, the thing so. with the fifth element though, is that's when, uh, uh, what, what should be all the, uh, uh, special effects had just kind of started to, to blossom. So it still kind of has a little bit of a, uh, a, uh, cheesy, you know, special effects look, but it's actually kind of a, kind of endearing. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 But it is kind of good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But, but anyway, uh, all right. So one to ten, what do you what do you give? Oh, the I was going to say also real quick. Uh, you you were talking about the uh, the whole carrying the camera thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you see uh, Chris Hemsworth uh, extraction on on uh, Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they that, they did that. I I saw some of the making of that. They did that and that. Yeah, there seems yeah. like jumping out of windows and they're following him with the camera and yeah. the whole like one long shot thing. Uh, yeah. They, it was it was amazing in that. So. Yeah, it's funny if you if you ever get involved in even small films or whatever. I mean, it's it's a lot of freaking work, man. It's just a it's just a ton. Um, but when you kind of tune into it, you can you can kind of I, I can't I can't watch TV or movies nowadays without thinking about how the shots are produced, right? Like where's the camera and and you know. Um, uh, why did they choose this angle and that kind of stuff? And some of these things, like extraction, as a matter of fact, now that you mention it, it's pretty impressive, man. What these guys do is impressive. It is creative and challenging and difficult, and it and a lot of it really does add to the story. Yeah. Some of it they just do for just because they want to be clever, which that irritates the crap out of me. Yeah. Well, um, even, even using that movie as an example, Extraction, compared to Extraction, the scene where he goes in there, you know, and he's, he's uh, uh, you know, trying to f find the boy for the first time. Compare mm -hmm. that to the, ro the rooftop chase scene in The Hunter, right? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, it's night and day. It's a thousand. Yeah, no comparison. Apart. Yeah, so uh, so anyway, to, to answer your question, I don't know, I'd give this a four. Yeah, that's funny because I'd be right there, four, four and a half. Yeah, May four maybe four maybe there. four for a time. Yeah. I'd give maybe a wasn't horrible. I didn't hate it, but. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. So Yeah. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be one like, oh yeah, man, let's get some popcorn and watch the hunter, you know. I'm glad I watched it again. You know, yeah. so yeah, so yeah, no doubt. So. All right. Any uh final right. thoughts? No, I don't think uh I think with I'm agreeing with you on the um I, I like Steve McQueen probably kind of like as a a classical uh movie star, you know, that I don't know enough about him to you know, be a fan or anything like that. I thought, like you mentioned, the Great Escape. He was cool in that, and Bullet, of course, mm -hmm. the car chase scene, and the car. <laughs> uh, but in real life, he's good. He's a good race car driver. I kind of tell you, his 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 personal story is a lot more interesting than yeah, a lot of these acting stories. stuff. Yeah, I, I might see. I might watch Tr Thomas Crown, Crown Affair because I guess that's a movie he did that's again got a lot of traction. People say it's awesome. I don't know, mm. you know, but but I like that one. Yeah, I like Thomas have Crown. You seen, have you seen it? I haven't seen mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but, that's pretty good. Yeah, but uh, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting because I was this is this is actually because just to be clear you know i kind of i kind of went into this saying i'm going to say this about uh yeah, about uh uh about uh, defending your life i did not think you were going to like it and the fact that you do i'm like wow great and i i thought you, you were going to hard defend the hunter and so yeah. I, i'm actually a little bit surprised at both i mean again not in a bad way or good way but we're kind of right. on the same page for both these and i'm a little bit like Oh, I'm almost I'm almost well, disappointed, Doug. I'm a little disappointed. Well, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, but I will <laughs> expand slightly on on the Albert Brooks thing. I was watching this, and I was thinking to myself, like, I need to watch more Albert Brooks stuff because this yeah. is the style of humor and the style of film that I actually like. And um, this, the elements in that movie were things that I'm missing in modern day stuff. Sure. And uh, especially the humor. I love, I love it, man. It's, I love his humor. Yeah. yeah well, you know, again, yeah. I say Seinfeld-ish and because I watched every episode of Seinfeld. Me right. and Elzeth streamed it from beginning to end, and I'll do it again probably in the next year or two. It never gets old. Uh, I like all the jokes, and I think probably if I'm ranking one to ten, um, George Costanza's in the top three of my all-time right. favorite characters. Man, right. that guy was just Dude. awesome. Well, uh, so anyway. I will tell you that I think his his comedy. I, I agree that there, it's very Seinfeld esque, but it is more subtle than Seinfeld. You know, it's yeah, different. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I tell you, have you have you watched broadcast news? Did you did you watch that? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, one of my I, there 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 are like comedy moments 
that, that throughout my life that still like st- there are lots of things that still stand out. And I remember in broadcast news, and if anybody hasn't seen it, Albert Brooks, I think, plays like a news writer, but he really wants mm-hmm. to be an anchor person, an anchor man. And he and he finally gets the, the chance to to be an anchor man, like on an evening news. He says, I'm gonna do this. And he goes in there and, and they put him in front of the news. And the reason he hates the current anchor man, because the, the current anchor man played by oh God. Uh, the same guy that was in the uh, William Hurt, played by William, William Hurt. Yeah, yeah and and this uh, is just an empty vessel. He's not smart, but he's just a pretty face, right? Yes. And he's like, I can't believe it. So finally, Albert Brooks gets in, gets on camera, and he starts to sweat. Like he immediately starts sweating, right? And he's just like <laughs> dumping water, and uh, and he's actually sweating through like his wool suit. Like you can actually see sweat stains on his suit. Mm-hmm. He's, just, he's just sweating. And uh, and they go and after he's on there for like five minutes something like that they go to commercial break and uh, the Holly Hunter character comes out and she's like how are you doing and and he's and he goes uh, do you think anybody will notice this <laughs> he's like literally got sweat stains like like on his suit he goes do you think anybody, do you think anybody but, that, that, but that's like a that's like a skill you know that's like a skill that comedians can have and he's oh, got it and he that is that he did it the this ability movie. to yeah the ability to, to uh, Point things out uh, that everybody can relate to, but he does it in in that uh, really understated kind of a way. And to me, I, I, again, I yeah. think that's yeah. it's uh, it's, um, it's yeah. I, 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 I shy away from sophisticated because I'm not. Yeah. I don't. I don't feel know. Like it's I, all the way up there, but yeah. it is clever. It is definitely clever, oh. and it's thought out. It's not. Oh, understand. You know, yeah, the understated, the understated sarcasm. He's mastered it. Like in this movie, yeah. like where where uh, where she had that. Uh, she, you know, they, they showed the scene of her like rescuing her, her cat, going running back into yeah. the building, and 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 he makes some sort of snide remark, and she goes, "You're just jealous," and he goes, "You have no, you never idea. know how you much, never know, yeah. you have no idea." And he said it in a way where you're like. Yeah, he freaking is jealous. I of sympathize him. with him. Yeah, I sympathize <laughs> with him. Yeah, because everybody wants the the yeah. fire rescue scene in their life story, right? Sure. Yeah, and like you were talking earlier, not to go back too much on this movie, but the whole thing where like he would he would talk at at uh, at the at the at the defense thing, and mm-hmm. you're you're waiting for him to have like that moment, like that that speech, which just that sells everything so hard, but he doesn't. Yeah. He's an he idiot. doesn't because he can't do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, he's a game of freaking fun. I thought that 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 whole idea that you could eat as much as you want and you it doesn't affect you, you don't gain any weight or anything, and the food tasted awesome. Like he played that great. He took one bite of an omelet. He's like, oh, oh, this is the best eggs I've ever had in my life. Oh, you know. And then the same thing with the shrimp. Like really it was, it was just funny, man. It was just like oh. you know, and just clean, good, solid. Oh, yeah, the whole the whole waiter at the Italian food restaurant. And the, and oh, the, that guy was great. Yeah. The sushi chefs, they were hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those people like, what's good? It's all good. It's all, it's all spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, yeah. So yeah, it was a good, that was a good trade off. Yes, awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, that's all we have for today. Uh, for all you listening, thank you very much for joining us. This has been an Analog Spectrum production and presentation. As always, it means a ton to both me and Doug that you took time to listen to our show. We enjoy making these things, but we get a massive kick out of knowing we have a few friends hearing what we have to say. This is about the fourth outro I've done, so let's keep it short. Please subscribe, share, and if you like what you're hearing, give us a top-notch five-star review. Finally, feel free to email us, Facebook message us, or tweet at us. We love feedback and criticism, as long as it's constructive. And we're always interested in new show ideas. Well, that's all I have for now. The shows will keep coming, I promise you that. Thanks again for hanging out with me and all of us at Analog Spectrum. We'll see you again soon.